Welcome to today's Farm Life. I'm Doug Cunningham. Today we're going to talk farming from the air. Ever wondered about crop dusters and see them flying around? I know you do. I see them all the time, flying back and forth, doing their job. Ever wondered what they do or how they do it? Well, I did. So I went looking for answers. Went up to Dakota Pro Air up by Letcher, South Dakota, and talked to Heath Kretschmar and Marcus Soon. And it's more involved than you think. Well, to start with, it's an Air Tractor 802. Um, they're made in Olney, Texas. It's got a Pratt & Whitney uh, PT6-65 AG, which is about a, what well, is 1300 horsepower uh, turbo prop engine. <clears throat> the aircraft fully loaded will uh, haul about, or the total weight loaded is 16,000 pounds. Uh, we can haul 800 gallons of water, uh, 320 gallons of fuel. Take an uh, 85 foot swath. The majority of our work we do is at two gallons per acre, so we can do about 400 acres of load if we can get off the runway fully loaded with the weather conditions. Generally, we we apply at about anywhere from 155 to 160 miles an hour, just depending on your load and you know how you're managing your speed. We try to applicate at you know about 12 foot, 10 to 12 foot off the crop or off the ground. According to Crestmer, flying an 8-ton machine 160 miles an hour, 12 feet off the ground is a job all by itself. But technology has really helped them refine their profession. We're currently running a new uh, state-of-the-art uh, GPS system. It's an iPad-based system, which uh, Bluetooth to uh, flow control so we can uh, keep our flow rate constant, you know, due to, you know, upwind, downwind due to speed changes and stuff, it'll compensate for that. When a farmer calls and gives us a field, we put it into our software program and it creates a shape file, which is basically an outline of the field. We <clears throat> And we can email that to our GPS system and we download that and we can guide directly from here to the field. When you get there, the, the field is outlined on your screen. We can see it on a Google map overlay, you know, so we can what we see on our screen is basically what we can see out the window. According to pilot Marcus Soon, technology has helped him refine their profession down to being able to be as precise as one to three feet flying that fast, applicating their product. But you still need to be aware of what you're doing and where you're at at all times. With cell towers and wind towers and met towers, meteorological towers, um, you know, there's more of them popping up all over the place and uh, you got to be very conscious of where they're at and uh, make sure you stay diligent and know know where they're at and stay within reference of them it's really easy to lose track of them and they're really difficult to see um, when you're flying so um, even if you know a tower is there um, sometimes it's difficult to even see it or pick it up when you're flying it's made it a lot easier. We don't have to get out a plot book and look at it. You know, we can zoom in with Google Earth or whatever it is and see it just like you're looking at it. So we know exactly what the field is, what's around it. Um, if there's houses or power lines or towers or anything like that. We don't like to uh, make anybody mad, but you know, we're trying to avoid structures or people or any of that. Um, you know, at all costs, um, but we still got to get our job done for our customer and get their field sprayed. According to Soon, to sit in the seat of a large crop dusting airplane, experience is the key. You get there by working your way through the training and then putting in the hours needed to work your way up the ladder. You have to do some type of formal flight training. You need to have at least a commercial pilot's license. Um, and then with insurance and stuff, we pretty much have to go to some type of egg school um, and you know graduate from that um, and then you typically you start out in a smaller airplane um, you know and build your time at least 500 hours of flight time you know a lot of tailwheel time versus a tricycle you know and then you get start out you start out in a smaller airplane usually a piston airplane of some type you know build couple hundred hours in that and you might be able to move up you know to a bigger airplane um, you know so you're 
maybe starting out hauling a hundred gallon, an airplane that can haul a hundred gallons. Um, then you move up to get into a small turbine or something like that, maybe 300 to 400 gallons. Um, and then you just kind of, as you build time and hours, you can work yourself up into a bigger aircraft. I mean, some guys get lucky, you know, and just get a job with somebody and they're able to advance fairly quickly. And some guys will work for somebody for, you know, five, six years before they even get to get into an airplane. Interesting. Very interesting uh, stepping inside the plane. Very intimidating, too. You see all the buttons and knobs and switches and things flying 12 feet off the ground, 165 miles an hour. Probably not going to happen with me behind the wheel, that's for sure. Um, remember, feel good about what you do today because what you do today is very important. Until next time, I'm Doug Cunningham.